Hey, what's up guys? So you've probably noticed different radar detectors advertise the ability to detect X-band or K-band or K-A-band, but what does that actually mean and what is a band? Well, it has to do with the frequency that the police radar gun antenna is transmitting on. You know how uh, your car stereo, for example, it can listen to different radio stations? Those different radio stations transmit at different radio frequencies, and radar guns can also transmit at different radio frequencies. Now, radar itself, the word actually stands for radio direction and ranging, or radio detection and ranging. But again, they're just radio waves. Now, these radio waves can transmit at different frequency ranges, and these different kind of subsections, these different ranges are called different bands. And it's just a convenient way to refer to different ranges of frequencies. Now you've probably heard of uh, X-band, K-band, and K-A-band. Let's talk a little bit about what they are and kind of how things have evolved over time. Uh, there's also a couple other ones that have been used historically, and so let's talk about that. Now when radar guns first came out in the 1940s, they actually operated on S-band. It was around two and a half gigahertz or so. And uh, those S-band antennas were massive. I mean, the whole setup was huge itself. You know, they would put it in like the trunk of a police car or something. And again, the antennas were ginormous. As technology improved, they started moving on to higher frequency radio waves uh, with smaller wavelengths, and it led to smaller antennas, which was really nice. Uh, in the 1960s, they came out with X-band uh, around 10 gigahertz or so. And X-band antennas were nice because uh, they could put them in a police car and actually use them not only when they're stationary, but also when they're driving around. Uh, then in the 1970s, they came out with K-band antennas, which were even smaller. Uh, those operate in maybe the 24 gigahertz range. And then in the 1980s, they came out with K-A-band, uh, which is in the low to mid 30 gigahertz range. And it was nice. As they got uh, higher and higher in frequency, the antennas actually got smaller and smaller, which was very advantageous for police officers. To give you an idea, here's a K-band antenna, and here is a K-A-band antenna. They're both designed for the exact same radar gun, uh, Decatur Genesis 2. But if you take a look, the main difference that you'll notice is the size, right? K-band, K-A-band. K-A-band is a lot smaller because of the higher frequency, and it's nice for cops who already have tons of stuff in their car. You know, the radar gun antenna and the counting unit, they've got computers and radios and lights and all this stuff already that's already taken up space, so it's nice for them to have a smaller antenna that just takes up less room in their cruiser. Now, there's actually some tricks that they can do to make the uh, the K-band antennas smaller, closer to K-A-band antennas. I've got a whole video talking about uh, police radar gun antenna designs. If you want to go into more technical information about it, usually there's some trade-offs to performance and whatnot, but there's a bunch of other stuff that we could talk about. In short, uh, higher frequency, smaller antenna, awesome. Now, there's also KU band that you may have heard about. Uh, KU band, it's actually a, it's closer to X band in size. It's larger than K band because of, instead of 24 gigahertz, we're actually going to 13 gigahertz. So again, lower frequency, bigger antennas. Now, a quick note also about the terminology. Uh, K band, it stands for Kurz, which is a German word for short. Uh, now, there's an issue with K band to where the water vapor in the atmosphere can actually absorb and attenuate or weaken the radio signal itself and and so a lot of times they would want to maybe not use K-band, but they would go above K-band and call that K-A-band, or maybe go under K-band and call that K-U-band. That's actually where those names came from. Uh, it's not a huge issue for police radar applications because it's mostly long distance radio transmissions. Uh, with police radio, K-band, it's close, it's close range. And so it's not a big deal, but that's actually where K-A and K-U came from and why it was actually developed. The FCC allows now K-U-band antennas to be sold and operated here in the US, but there's no reason for manufacturers to develop them when they already have K-band and K-A, and there's no desire for a police officer to run KU if they already have stuff that's a lot smaller, you know? So the three that are in use today, we've got X-band, K-band, and K-A-band. Now, X-band, it's mostly phased out at this point. It's still actively in use in Ohio and New Jersey, um, and then also in some rural places you'll see in like rural Oregon or North Carolina or a couple other states here and there, but for the most part, it's K-band and K-A-band. In any event, how does all this information help us as radar detector users? Well, when it comes to uh, X-band, K-band, and K-A-band, X-band, again, it's mostly phased out, so it's nice. We can actually turn off X-band detection on our radar detectors for most of the country. Again, with a few exceptions here and there, but for the most part, X-band is almost always going to be a false alert from an automatic door opener or even your cell phone, believe it or not, can cause a false alert on your radar detector. Um, so most people actually turn X-band off.
myself included. Uh, K-band is still in use all over around the country. It can be a little bit harder to tell the difference between a real and a false alert on K-band just because there's so many other sources of K-band, including speed signs, automatic door openers, uh, other cars with uh, radar-based collision avoidance systems, smart cruise control, blind spot radar. So uh, police radar and a lot of other sources of radar all operate on K-band, so that can be a little bit tougher to tell the difference between real and false alerts. KA band is actually easier. KA band is almost always going to be a legitimate alert. There are other sources of KA, uh, like some satellite dishes, for example. Uh, some poorly designed radar detectors actually leak radio signals that can cause false alerts on our radar detectors on KA band, which is why we have uh, filters on KA band, like KA guard, uh, RDR, KA filter, things like that. They're designed to filter out false alerts from other nearby radar detectors. But for the most part, KA band is going to almost always be legitimate. Now, we could actually take it a step further and take a look at the exact frequencies of the radio signals themselves, the radar signals, and that can actually be really useful. And I want to talk about that in uh, next week's episode of 5-Minute Fridays. Uh, in any event, uh, yeah, that's a quick look as far as radar bands, what they mean, and where all that stuff comes from. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for next week's episode. We'll go into more detail, and now you know the basics as far as radar bands. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.